Om Shri Sai Ram. Sai Ram, dear brothers and sisters, welcome to the 23rd edition of Samarpan program here at Sarvadharma Service Center in Farmingdale Borough, Howell Township, New Jersey, United States. First of all, we apologize for some technical issues we had, so we have delayed by about 15 minutes. Um, I guess that's part of uh, Swami's plan. We always blame Swami for everything, right? So this is one of those. So, um, so today, I have the special honor to introduce our Samarpan speaker for this final month of 2023, our very dear brother, Sri Chandra Bhanu Sisipati. Born and raised in Hyderabad, India, Brother Bhanu studied in Swami's institutions all his life. He was blessed to study in Sri Satya Sai Vidya Vihar in Hyderabad until high school from the early age until 1997, followed by higher secondary school in Prashanti from 1997 to 99. Then he did his bachelor's in commerce in Brindavan campus and master's in economics and master's of philosophy in economics also in Sri Satya Sai Institute of Higher Learning in Prashanti Nilayam campus from 2003 until 2007. In all those years, he was fondly called as Prasadam boy by Swami and by many other revered elders as he used to lead the Prasadam distribution inside the Prasanti Nilayam Mandir. And I also can recall that when I was there in many occasions, seeing you were uh, carrying that silver you know, vessel with uh, laddus and so on. As one of the first persons, I remember that, you know, Swami giving you instructions. Um, he also led the communications team during the Gram Seva activities between 2000 and 2007. He then spent between 2007 and 2010 in Shivam, Hyderabad, and served Swami in various capacities, doing many village activities, medical camps, and water plant implementations in and around Hyderabad. After living in Hyderabad, he moved to London, United Kingdom in 2011. He worked in marketing departments of various fast-moving consumer goods, short FMCG companies in the United Kingdom between 2011 and 2022, leading market research activities for some of the biggest brands which we all know, such as Dettol, Lysol, Harpic, Airwick, etc. During his time in the United Kingdom, he also had served as a service coordinator for Slow Sci Center in West London and oversaw some of the COVID relief activities as well as Ukraine relief activities recently, as we all at Sarvadharma also very well know firsthand what it takes to do that seva. In January of 2023, Brother Banu and his wife, Sister Lakshmi, moved to Parsipani, New Jersey, in a new role for him in the consumer division of the same company. He led consumer market insights functions for dishwashing brand called Finish, and other household brands such as Resolve, Woolite, etc., owned by a global FMCG company called Reckitt Ben Kaiser. Today, we will hear how he came into our dear Swami's fold and also about his profound experiences where Bhagwan came into his life. With this, I would like to invite Brother Bhanu to the podium and request him to share with us his experience with Swami for the next 70 minutes or so. So Brother, please do come and share with us your experiences. And like I said, even though we were a little delayed, we have no issue with you extending your time to talk to us, okay? Sairam. Om Shri Sai Ram, placing my humble pranams at Bhagwan's lotus feet. Uh, Sai Ram to all of you. Um, I don't take it lightly when I say, when I use this word privilege. It's a privilege and honor to be among all of you today and those who have joined online as well. Um, I tell this in most of the places I speak. It's that whenever 
I, from Swami students, fraternity, come and stand here. Uh, it's just not my stories. It's just not somebody else's stories. It's everybody's stories. It's just his story. So whenever I speak, it's not just my speech. I've actually spoken to two or three different classmates of mine to come up with this speech. Um, and in the span of time we all spent time with Sony between 97 and 2007, it was the most interesting time. Uh, we've seen the best of Sony uh, to the most different Sony, which we probably never imagined, right? So I think we saw me, we saw Sony walking and running, you know, getting into hundreds and thousands of 10,000 people of Narayan Seva in Hillview Stadium serving himself to Sony who went into car, went into wheelchair and needed support. And so we, we saw a stretch of things, uh, the particular batch which we, so somehow the entire uh, student group that we have, we are very well bonded together. Uh, and then we are very, we have a strong unity among us to actually speak the same voice. So whenever we go anywhere, we represent, we represent each other, we speak to each other, and then we tell Swami stories of each other, not just us. So today, whatever I'm going to speak to you is, is everybody's stories, not just my stories. So a lot of them have actually fed into this speech. So saying, um, it's very interesting that Sai Vibrade brother actually introduced me as Chandra Bhanu Pisi Party. Um, my actual full name is Sai Chandra Bhanu Pisi Party. Uh, it's interesting because I suddenly, I mean, I wanted to start it in, in a very different way. Um, I can tell you there is uh, some powerful things coming on later <laughs> when I speak to you, but it just struck me the, when he introduced me as Chandra Bhano. This was my very first experience um, in 11th class when I joined Prashant Vidalayam. Um, obviously, whenever Swami sees somebody new, Swami asks them, what's your name? So I think this was one of my occasions where Swami asked me, what's your name? And then I said, Swami, my full name is Sai Chandra Bhanu. And then Swami just smiled and said, how can Chandra and Bhanu be together? Right? So Chandra is moon, Bhanu is sun. And Swami said, how can Chandra and Bhanu be together? Uh, and then I, I, I knew Swami is smiling and then I, 11th class, so it's about 14 years, 15 years old. And then I said, Swami, my full name is Sai Chandra Bhanu. If Sai is there, anything is possible. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Right, so I, uh, um, I, and it is. So I think we've, we've had several experiences like that where, where size there, anything is possible. So I think when uh, Baradev brother actually introduced me, I said, okay, I put a, I suddenly remembered this experience. I said, okay, let's start with the smile uh, because it, it was a most profound foundation where uh, I knew the, you know, naughtiness of Swami and uh, the beauty of Swami th where he's expecting you to think beyond, stretch yourself and so on and so forth. Um, but I also want to thank you, Bharadai brother, for a very kind introduction. Uh, thank you so much. So it's been uh, an amazing journey with Swami, uh, starting in you know uh, very humble be beginnings where my both my parents were very close to Swami uh, in terms of devotion. They've been going to Prashantinayam since when they were sands. Um, also very inspired by my. Um, mother's elder sister, my Pedama, as we call, uh, my, who is actually a, uh, a gyneco gynecologist in General Hospital in, uh, in Prashantanalim, time since late 1980s, um, who's also inspired me to pull me into Swami's fold and so on and so forth. So very, very thankful to her. Uh, and then obviously, we, I actually was born and brought up in Hyderabad, and the house was, interestingly enough, right behind Shivam. So you know Satyam Shivam Sundaram, right? Satyam is Bombay, Shivam is Hyderabad, and uh, Sundaram is Chennai. So Swami used to come to Hyderabad a lot, many, many times before the early 90s. Um, so we were, so my house was just behind Shivam Temple. I never used the front door. I used to actually jump the wall and go. So I'm so used to being in Swami's circle uh, that most of the, it had a very large influence. Uh, running through most of my life. Today, actually, I wanted to speak about um, various differences. Like, so, I mean, we, we, we have a lot of differences that we see in our life, right? So I think there is disease, there is war, there is crime, 
somebody stalled, somebody shot. Right. I mean, uh, Ravana was a was a demon. Kumbhakarna was a foodie, but then the third brother was a devotee of Rama. Right. It's interesting. So it's very interesting to understand the differences between all of these. Um, at the same time, uh, Hiranyakashipu was a crazy devil, but his son Prahlada was the greatest devotee of Vishnu, who actually summoned the Narasimha Swami out outside it. So. When you think about all of these things, you see that you don't understand what is driving what. So even if you are thinking, okay, I am like this today, maybe it's because of my parents. No, because Prahlada's father was Hiranyakashipu, but he turned out to be fantastic. So, it, so how do we understand all of these uh, differences that we have? And Swami clearly says always that it's it's the function of law of karma right so it's it's uh, and karma to understand karma is also very interesting when i was discussing with one of the brothers who helped me you know compose all this po speech i've had several conversations with him so we were interacting and he was remembering many things reminiscing a lot of things that swami said swami used to say if you brush your teeth is it karma it's not it's kriya right if you if you're walking on a road is it karma? It's not. You're just acting. Um, you're sitting in a car and an Uber driver is driving. Is it karma? No. You're just sitting there. So it's, so there is difference between karma and kriya. So what is karma? So karma is something which is an outcome that happens. It gets written somewhere <laughs> where you have done something intentionally, whether it is good or bad. And you are fully conscious of it. Right? Uh, and then Swami says sometimes the, uh, so karma is a place where you have an action and there is a reaction. So the action and reaction could be immediate, right? So you went and you go and bang on a wall, you'll have a bump on your head and there'll be a crack on the wall perhaps. So the action is immediate. Swami says the first type of karma and the reaction of the karma, uh, action, there is an action, there is a reaction. So when you hit a wall, there is an absolutely immediate impact. Uh, so there is an immediate reaction. Sometimes there is an action and there is a reaction sometime later. So for example, you plant a seed and there is years after it becomes a tree. It becomes a tree. And sometimes it is after some lives. It sometimes it is after crazy amount of time. So and Swami used to always tell us very funny story about this. Um, Swami used to say that, so for example, a mosquito. Mosquitoes life span is about three days, three to four days, not more than that, a single mosquito. And then there is a hydra. Hydra is maximum six hours. It doesn't survive more than that. It's a very small microorganism, which is small visible, it dies. So imagine you, Swami so used to say, you are sitting in the previous night and then you are uh, sitting in a restaurant and, and you were non-stop eating. Swami so has a very funny way to say that. You are not stopping at all, you're eating and you're eating, maybe it's biryani, it's, it's some, you know, it's some paneer curry or something like that and you're enjoying it thoroughly without uh, think even thinking about the consequence of it. Now mosquito is alive at that point of time and mosquito is observing your behavior. You're, you're eating continuously, non-stop, you're, you're just enjoying it um, as though there is no limit to this world, right? And the next day morning at 6 a, 5 a.m. you get up uh, you have done your Nagar Sankirtan, you have done your Suprabhatam, you have done your own karm, you have done your Vedic chantings, you have listened to Swami's bhajan, and that's when this hydra, hydra was born in the 5 a.m., let's suppose. And then Hydra is watching you from 5 a.m. in the morning. So it's watched you done Suprabhatam, it's watched you done Om Karam, it's watched you done Vedam, bhajans, everything, like spiritually you're an amazing guy. And then you're uh, also going and writing Swami's speeches and etc. and suddenly at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m., your stomachs start to grow. <laughs> Okay, and Swami says, this is when you run and do, you have loose motions and you're struggling. And then Hydra suddenly thinks, oh my God, how, how cruel is God? Um, this boy woken up at 5 a.m., he's done Suprabhatam, he's done Bhajans, he's done Vedam, he's, he's written fantastic things about Swami to everybody, send few forwards, and still Swami is just punishing him. Why? Yeah, right, it's so cruel. And then mosquito comes to this hydra and tells, see, you've just been born. You don't know what he has done the previous night. <laughs> he 
he's been unstoppable. He's sitting at the table, although a lot of them have told them this is enough, this is enough, he's not stopped, right? He's com continuously eaten, 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 and that's the reaction of it. God has no involvement in this. So now extrapolate this scenario into our own lives. We see a lot of suffering. We see a lot of uh, things, injustice to people uh, around us. Uh, we feel that this is not right, this is not fair, this should not be happening to this person, this sh that should not be happening to this person. We are like those hydras, right? Uh, and uh, they m like mosquitoes, there are also a lot more elders to us who have seen this person's past or gurus and people uh, and you know divine incarnations like Swami who have been a lot more aware of a lot more lives of us and Swami tells Swami just smile and leave right so Swami tells that our lives are like those hydras so we actually assess and judge everything around us based on what we are seeing now but we probably don't have the vision and the ability and awareness and uh, you know, the power to see beyond what we see today. So, and that's the reason why, mm, so and th at, at this juncture, I remember a very good incident. You you all must know a great devotee, Phillips Crystal, uh, who, who's a psychiatrist, British woman, and wrote fantastic books on Swami as well. Great devotee. Uh, it's a great experience of her. She was, uh, um, she was in Vrindavan and uh, Swami called her and her daughter for an interview, so she stepped out and wanted to actually, was looking for her uh, daughter and she couldn't find her daughter and suddenly Swami came out for darshan. Right, Swami came out for darshan and um, and suddenly whenever Swami comes out for darshan, you immediately have to sit, right? Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you just go and sit. So she just went and sat and uh, she happens to sit in front of a, uh, a mother uh, and this mother was holding a child. Uh, a child who was blind, who was deaf, was completely crippled and mother is holding, she's crying, she's feeling very bad. And everybody else who's sitting around this mother with her child uh, was voluntarily withdrawing all the letters in their hands. You know, in those days when Swami used to walk, if you've seen all the darshan videos and all of that, people used to pounce and you know try to get their letters into Swami's hands and so on and so forth. So, but just by the empathy, looking at that mother and helpless child and seeing that mother and child, everybody around her decided, okay, let's let's make sure that Swami, this attention is on her and we don't spoil this moment for her and she needs, she looks like she needs everything she needs. Uh, that that she can get from Swami. So even Phyllis Crystal was play, praying very, very strongly. And then Swami comes. Uh, Swami is collecting letters from everybody around and Swami just walks past that mother with this child. Swami doesn't even look at her. And then Phyllis Crystal in her mind, she is sitting on the other side and she is thinking, how cruel are you, God? Just like this Hydra, right? Uh, how cruel are you, Swami? She definitely needs help. Why can't you just um, help her or just at least give her darshan and give her the blessing or vibhuti or whatever? And then Swami is a little more front, turns back, looks at her, uh, comes to her and says, what, do you think I'm cruel? <laughs> and then Swami touches her head. And in that moment, uh, Phyllis Crystal has a vision where they're actually crossing several lives, several lives, several lives, and suddenly they are in a 14th century court scene where there is this rampant king who is just cruel to his people. He's giving the worst punishments possible. Right? He's all death sentence, pluck your eyes out, cut your hands off, that kind of sentences. And there is a person who is executing all those sentences given by this king, this cruel king. And then Swami suddenly says, uh, looks at Phyllis Crystal and what, sh what should I do in this occasion? Swami, you should definitely punish this king. He's, you know, he's so cruel, he's doing all these kinds of horrible uh, acts which, are, which have no rationale. He's just enjoying his power. You should give him all the thing. And what about the executioner? Yeah, executioner is not even actually challenging the king. Swami, he should also be punished. And suddenly Swami comes out of the gets her out of the vision and says, after many lives, this mother was that king. And that boy, helpless boy, 
sorry, mother was the executioner and the helpless boy was the king. And then Swami says, what do you want me to do? And then it's an act of karma. And then uh, Phyllis Crystal just smiles and Swami, surrender to you, whatever you do. But Swami, out of all of his grace, he walks to that, after all of this incident, he walks to that child, he walks to that mother, creates vibhuti, gives the vibhuti, blesses them and walks. So it's a, it's a very great reminder in terms of how we are like hydras, right? So we, we probably don't know what is happening whenever we cannot comprehend. It is best to surrender to Swami rather than going into th a thought process where we do not have anything else to do there, right? Um, in, the same, in the same section that we were talking about where action, every action has a reaction, out of his several lives. This, there's an, uh, another interesting story of one of our Sai brothers. Uh, this Sai brother, um, before he was married to his wife, um, their relatives, their cousin, far cousins or whatever, they were supposed to be married and um, they were supposed to be married when they were 24. But uh, for next 10 years, every year something was happening in their family. One day, one, one year, he had to go somewhere and study and or do some courses. Another year, she had to do something else. Another year, somebody else passed away in their family. Yeah. So on and so forth. So uh, they were, every year, something would come and it would postpone. And after 10 years, when he was 34, finally, that year, everything was okay. That year everything was okay and then they everybody was happy that oh finally finally so it was a big thing in the even within their family that you know they were trying to get married for 10 years and now they so there is nothing wrong with their, their families it's just some it's just not happening just by uh, the mechanics of karma let us say for now and then at when so and then the, everybody was invited even the sai brother who narrated uh, this story to me he was also invited for this wedding just three days waiting uh, before the wedding, his father is sitting having a, a tea and uh, he puts his tea down, he has a heart attack and passes away. Three days before wedding, right? Uh, and then he, this boy, he doesn't understand what is going on. It's like, how much can I do? I mean, I've been trying as over and over again. Uh, we want to be married, but what what is happening here? I don't understand. So, Sometime later, this, this boy had a vision where through uh, a psychiatric exercise, it's called as PLR, it's like post-life regression. It's been, it's formally a scientific numerology where they do. Uh, he, he, he was invited for that. He wanted to investigate a little more. And this Sai brother who narrated to me, he was actually present there and he was watching all of this. He went, he had a vision in that process of actually uh, speaking through this process and he was suddenly he went into a trance where he went 5,000 years back and he's saying everything is smelling of death there are thousands of people dying there I'm standing here I don't know what I'm doing here who are you he says I'm a god you know in the 5,000 years ago in and uh, that was the day when Bhishma died so Bhishma is a very prominent Mahabharata character, the, you know, the biggest uh, forefathers of all Pandavas and Kaundavas, Kauravas. So he, that day is the day he passed away. So obviously a lot of people are coming to have the final darshan of Bhishma and this boy was a god uh, trying to secure everything because people are coming for last darshan of Bhishma. And he was uh, trying a part of the protection force because even Krishna is there he was part of the protection force trying to protect all these people from being uh, harmed because Ashwatthama was still uh, alive and he is a Mayavi. He can shape shift and uh, everything and he can still harm Pandavas. So he's, he's part of that protection group, protection, protecting people. So a lot of people were pushing. There is a lot of pushing uh, going on apparently there. And then essentially he was trying to be as polite as possible and he started beating people. And as a part of that, there is one big devotee or one big follower, a lady of Bhishma, who she w desperately wanted to go and see Bhishma. But in this process of frustration, he beats that person very hard, this girl. 
this particular girl and pushes her away very, very hard. And that girl actually curses that I was trying to come near you. You pushed me so hard. I've, you pushed me so hard. Trust me, you will struggle to find me as well one day. So that <laughs> 5,000 years later. So karma can be the action, the reaction can come tomorrow. It can come five years later, 10 years later, even 5,000 years later. Um, I'm also reminded of another story where this happened in late 80s or early 80s. Uh, one of another brother of mine was narrating. So there was one uh, student who was very, very close to Swami and who used to live uh, with Swami and spend a lot of time with Swami and he was very, very close. Uh, and in Brindavan those days, it was very, Brindavan was very, very small of those days. And then um, this boy suddenly used to be very, very interactive with Swami. And one day Swami said, oh, why don't you come stay with me? And then, and then he said, Swami, oh, this is great. And everybody caught his attention and everything. And he went inside. For three months, he was staying with Swami. And every day when Swami goes out to goes out for darshan and spend and time for bhajans, this boy used to actually sneak out of Thrai Brindavan and go to Bangalore and come back. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, obviously, when we get some amazing things, we tend to take it for granted. Uh, so this boy used to go and come out, uh, go and watch a movie, come back, do something, come back, eat something, come back, and so on and so forth. So some VIPs, some close devotees of Swami spotted this boy. <laughs> Because he was always walking around Swami and you know distributing some stuff or something, so they complained to Swami. Swami, you spend a lot of boy time with this boy. He's also staying with you, um, but uh, we have seen him come out and sneak out and see movies and etc. So why are you doing this? And then Swami just smiled uh, and actually shouted at them, "This none of your business. He's my boy. Don't talk to me about it. He's a good boy." And then Swami walked away. So even people who, who were much closer to Swami from an uh, institute side of things, they didn't understand. So one, uh, one of the close persons from the institute asked Swami, Swami, why is it uh, that a lot of boys actually m are better than him? They're more sincere. They come every day, super bhatam. They do bhajans. They get very good ranks. They don't get much proximity of you. This boy is just an average student, but he's getting so much time with you. And he's already three months. And then one day before the three months ended, Swami said, in, Sh in Shirdi Sai Avatar, when I came, when I first time came to Shirdi, people were hitting me with stones. People, be, people were driving me away out of Shirdi. And this boy protected me and took me to his house and protected me for three days. So now he gets three months with Bhagwan to stay. And the very next day he was asked to leave. <laughs> so his time was up. <laughs> so. So it basically, we don't know whether good actions or bad actions, when it will come to fruition, at what, in what way will it come to fruition, and so on and so on, but it will come. So is a, an, uh, there's another fantastic story which Swami used to tell us, is um, why was Dhritarashtra, uh, you know, father of Kauravas, born blind, right? And Swami says, even some thousand years, even before Dhritarashtra, there used to be a hunter. This hunter used to hunt birds, uh, and he used to hunt a lot of birds, and uh, and he had a specific target for one tree where there used to be a lot of birds. But you know, just uh, just from a pattern point of view, when birds sit together, even if one bird moves because of some disturbance, all the birds fly away, right? So essentially, he used to be very frustrated that whenever he used to go with his arrow and everything, just it all it had to do is one bird to fly, and all the birds will fly. So his frustration was climbing, climbing, climbing. There was a lot of time where he was, you know, reaping all of this uh, frustration within himself. Um, and one fine day, he uh, prepared himself to take a revenge. All right. So he climbs this. Uh, he he goes to this tree, and the, all the birds fly away. But he gets onto the tree. He climbs up to the branch, and he finds all the babies because there are a lot of uh, birds. And what he does, out of his rage and frustration, which has piled up for years together, he actually kills all the babies, almost about 100 of them. He plucks their eyes, kills them, and cuts them off, and, and he enjoys it. And all these 100 birds which flew away from that, bird, uh, from that tree, 
are standing somewhere else, uh, are you know sitting on another tree and watching it, crying, helpless. They cannot come. They cannot come and protect their, you know, like um, small little birds. Come back to thousand years later, this person was born again and again and again and again. And one day he's born as Dhritarashtra. He has hundred kids, Kauravas. There are hundred of them. He is blind, but in his own presence, all of them are killed. So Swami has to tell this story that, you know, karma comes and you cannot stop it. Right? It comes in its own time. It has its own law and uh, so on and so forth. So once Swami was asked, Swami, is there a way to escape it, escape this karma? And then Swami actually in a very loud, loves, uh, loud nice uh, loud voice, Swami said, Brahma kaina vadi tata kaina idi kodardu. So, so basically, even if it is Brahma or is it Brahma's grandfather, they cannot escape karma. Right? It's uh, So only uh, by grace of Lord can you navigate karma. But you cannot escape it. Here I have to make my own confession uh, before I actually explain this a little more. Um, when Sai Bharada brother actually reached out to me, so actually Krishnamurti Garu was the person who first introduced me to Sai Bharada brother and uh, it was been good, we have we've had a several conversation to come and speak but then we found this date to be the perfect date. Uh, so a couple of weeks ago, uh, Sai, Sai Bharada brother confirmed that Bhanu come, you're, this is all set, you come and speak. And then I said, so brother, definitely. And then I was looking for topics and uh, I was discussing with uh, some of my friends what, what could be the best one. And then we were talking about karma. Uh, it's not an easy topic to talk about and it's very difficult to digest as well <laughs> because it reminds us about our own, a lot of things that we have probably gone through. And then I was thinking about the title of the talk with Sai Bharata brother and I, I first wrote escaping Karma with Sai Smarana, right? This is what I wrote. And then for some reason, it just didn't sound convincing to me. <laughs> I said, okay, this is, a, this is a bit overcooked. What should I write about it? I just wrote escaping because this is probably, we, we, we've been so close to Swami for a long, long time. We just assume a lot of things. Uh, uh, we have our own understanding and so on and so forth. We just feel that, okay, I'll do this somehow. This will get solved and everything, but uh, ultimately it's up to Swami. So I wrote escaping karma with Sai Smarana. Like Swami, chant Swami's name and Swami will take care. So this is kind of confidence we have sometimes. And then I was, uh, and then some for some reason I deleted it. And then I wrote, I don't, I, I cannot confirm it. There is no validated <laughs> root of this. So how do, what do I write? So I said navigating karma with Sai, right? So it's probably the only, you can dodge a few things possibly. So I said navigating karma with Sai. Uh, and so Sai Brada brother will have this first email of mine where there are almost four or five spaces where I started writing about myself. I did not send that email. I just left and switched off the phone because uh, somebody else was at the door and I came. Uh, and then uh, I went to the door and I came back and then I received a message from Sai Brada brother. Brother, you wrote 200 uh, words bio. Why don't you write 400 I, because I need to explain it properly. And then I'm wondering, when did I send the email? I've not yet decided my title, title of the talk. <laughs> I went back to my <laughs> phone and I, I saw the, f the email is already gone. I never press the button. I promise I never press the button send because I was still thinking, you know, escaping karma with Sai Smarana might be more powerful. I was not still convinced at that time, but the email had gone. <laughs> <laughs> he had already got, he already messaged me. At that time, I didn't tell you, brother, but this is honestly what I was going to talk. But uh, honestly, there is no escaping from it, right? So that's that's something we have to acknowledge today. That's even Swami has sent that email to you <laughs> without any of my my doing in that. So actually, we, I'm reminded of one, one more uh, uh, interesting story where Arjuna uh, comes to Krishna one day and says, uh, Lord, uh, I do a lot of things on my own. Nobody's watching me. Obviously, there are no cameras even at that time. So um, nobody's watching me. How do you, how can I be, I mean, should I be worried about karma? <laughs> because nobody's watching me. This, so can I hide from it, right? So how, what is the guarantee that this karma has an action? 
And then Krishna apparently, Swami tells us very sweetly, so Krishna apparently holds Arjuna's hand, he takes to Gokulam, where there are 200,000 cows. Cows, uh, they're all in a nice little com compound. And then Krishna brings one calf from another set. Obviously, they can't be in the same herd. So the calves are, the young calves are in some other place. So Krishna brings one calf and opens the gate of this 200,000 cows and leaves it. So this calf actually goes to each cow, smells the udder. It actually searches for next one hour. And uh, Arjuna is confused what Krishna is trying to tell him. So this calf is going to every cow and smelling the udder, smelling the udder, smelling that. Finally, some, some, you know, some 199,000th cow, it goes and detects this is my mother and drinks the milk. And Krishna says, this is how karma comes. <laughs> Wherever you are, whatever you are, even if you think it's invisible, it will follow you. And it will follow you. It might take some time, <laughs> but it comes. So whether it is good or bad and so on and so forth. So I think that is a very interesting way as to that which depicts that, that always follows. But I think what Swami has always told us is that it's very important to understand all of this as information, right? All of what we are observing around us is information. As far as you are outside the ring and treat it as information, understand what you're trying to think, then it is always information. Once you consume it and you try to w try to overcook it in your mind, then you're <laughs> then you're drowning with it, right? That's what Swami says. It's also a very beautiful. There is also Swami also a very tells a very beautiful story about Garuda, right? You, you all know Garuda. Garuda is the Garuda Vahara Narayana. We have so many bhajans. So, basically, Garuda is the biggest, you know, smartest, fastest vehicle of Lord Vishnu. So, Garuda has this uh, fantastic opportunity to, you know, you know, travel around Earth, see everything so on and so forth. So one day, this Garuda finds a beautiful small dove, slightly injured, uh, fallen off. So Garuda goes, rescues this dove, treats him, nicely brings him to Vaikuntha. Right? Garuda is outside, as you, as you can see, whether you go to Tirupati or whether you go to Eli Narayana temple, Garuda will be outside standing like this. Right? So even if you go to Tirupati on the, you know, before you go to Sun Hill Cell as well, there is Garuda. So Garuda is al always outside Vaikuntha, right? So essentially when this, uh, when, they, when he was sitting there, so even this dove used to sit right next to Garuda, enjoying Vishnu's presence, enjoying the company, so on and so forth. So is this dove was nicely enjoying the life along with Garuda, like a brother. One day, Lord Yama comes. As you know, Lord Yama is the Lord of Death who takes us to the final journey, whatever. And the Lord Yama, he walks into, so they have to take permission of Ga uh, Garuda and then they go into, he was going into Vishnu Murthy's abode. He looks at Garuda, looks at the dove and smiles. Right? <laughs> he smiles very mischievously. Now Garuda gets very scared. <laughs> says, oh my God, <laughs> Yama has looked at <laughs> this dove. The smile can only mean one thing. I think it, uh, this dove is going to die. So I have to protect this, my brother whom I've been loving so much. So Garuda is the fastest vehicle on this earth. So he flies seven seas, seven islands, seven kingdoms, whatever you want to say, he cries fa farthest f uh, part of the earth, far away from Vaikuntha, and hides him in the forest in a small burrow somewhere, and comes back very fast, because he's Garuda. So he came back very fast, he comes and sits near the Vishnu's door. Lord Yama's meeting with Vishnu is over, so Lord Yama comes out. Uh, comes out and uh, doesn't find the dove. Uh, doesn't find the dove and feels, oh Vishnu, he looks at Lord Vishnu and says, oh Vishnu Maya, you are so blessed. I was thinking, uh, that's what I was thinking in my vision when I came, this dove was supposed to be injured at somewhere, seven islands, seven seas, far away in a forest, in a small burrow. It was supposed to die. That's what I was wondering, wha how come it can come so fast right beside you and stay beside you and escape death. And then Garuda is struck. What are you talking? So he immediately rushes back to place where he hit the dove. And that is where he sees the snake swallowing, a snake swallowing the duck and, and, the, and the duck dove dies. He, uh, Garuda comes rushing back to the Vishnu Murthy's enter, entrance door and says, Lord Yama, what is this? 
what is this that has just happened? I just thought that I was protecting it. I did not know that you had the vision and that is where that death is going to anyway happen. So interestingly, that is, wh that is what Swami says, buddhi karmanu saradhi. Right, so when ka basically your discriminatory power vanishes because when karma comes, karma becomes the driver. Now it's also very interesting when uh, when this particular thing, I'm not really good at uh, Sanskrit. I've studied Telugu in, uh, as a language in university and college. But this learned brother of mine, he was explaining this verse, so I had to practice a couple of times. So he actually said, buddhi karmanu sarani. Right, that's what he said. But I wrote a saradhi. Sarani basically means it's a karma becomes the, uh, karma overtakes discrimination. Sarani basically. But saradhi has a different meaning. But it became more powerful for my own understanding to tell you today. It is that it's not actually karma and saradhi, it's sarani. So I, I wrote saradhi by mistake, but it actually made the meaning more powerful to me when I wrote it like that. That karma becomes the saradhi uh, when it of your buddhi when the time comes. Right? So that's what <laughs> I understood from this. So, so this is again connected to some of the incidents that happened even in uh, Mahabharata. So when Pandavas lose the game, and they are actually, you know, banished from the kingdom. Krishna is fighting in the with Kaur Kauravas in the court, saying, "The Duryodhana, at least give five villages to Pandavas. How will they survive? Otherwise, if you if you don't give them anything and you chase them everywhere and you try to kill them, how will they survive? At least give five five villages so that they can go and they are protected in that quarantine." And but Duryodhana says, "No, I will not give. I will not give. If their parents got they lost, I will not give. Go." And then uh, uh, during all these court sessions, Swami says there is always a break. So you come out of the court session. So they're going to the restrooms or something. And uh, Duryodhana is coming out and Krishna is coming out. This is outside the court. There is nobody else there. Only Duryodhana and, and Krishna come and m meet face to face. And, uh, and Krishna says, Duryodhana, why are you doing this? I mean, can you, can you not? They're, own, they're your own cousins. Why are you doing this? And suddenly the <laughs> Duryodhana stone itself changes. And uh, Duryodhana says, Krishna, Janami Dharma Adharmasya. I know the difference between Dharma and Adharma, but I don't know what is overtaking me in that court. <laughs> the, I don't know what is overtaking my buddhi and my heart and behavior. Something is overtaking me and it's not stopping me. I know. Janami Dharma Adharmasya. I know, uh, but I'm not able to control. Right, so I think Swami, what Swami says is when it when when karma overtakes, even your buddhi is not in control; it overtakes completely, right? Essentially, coming. So, if you think about all of these things, uh, so essentially, whenever there is an action, there is a reaction, immediate reaction. Today, tomorrow, some years later, thousands of years later, some lives later, we don't know it is happen. But with grace of Lord, we can navigate that karma. The fourth layer, Swami says, is gra with grace of Lord, you can navigate karma. And Swami always tells the story of Markandeya in a very different twist. So we know the Markandeya is an immortal star and uh, in, in the history of Hindutva. But Ma Markandeya was born as, born and supposed to be living only for 16 years. His death was destined. He was Shiva Bhakta, Markandeya was supposed to die 16 years, 100%. Everybody knew it. And uh, the entire story as well, if you read it and if you see the movie as well, it's written like that. But then at 16th year, when Yama comes to kill him and take him, uh, Markandeya holds the Shivalinga very tightly. right? Shivalinga he holds and when Yama releases his pasham, that whip, that whip goes and wraps around even Shiva. So Shiva gets, the original version of the story is Shiva gets angry, he comes and kills Yama and gives lives to uh, Markandeya. But Swami tells uh, the insight here is different. Swami tells that the death has still happened. Swami swapped the death of Markandeya to Yama and gave Yama's more immortality to Markandeya. That is the insight Swami says, that, that the karma, the action still happened, the death. Because Yama would uh, anyway come back because it's part of the law of nature, so he'll come back anyway. But all Shiva did was to still let the karma happen, but the effect of it changed. Right? So that's a, that's a very powerful uh, story that Swami says. 
And Swami also say, uh, also always tells this particular thing that take a medicine. It's very effective when you buy it today, right? It's very very effective. It's very strong. It treats your treats your body and so on and so forth. Let's say you've forgotten this uh, particular uh, tablet that you bought, and uh, you realize it expired after six months. Uh, but you take it without knowledge, and you know that there is no effect of this medicine. And then suddenly you see the box of the tab tablets, and you see it's six months expired. right? So essentially, the effect is not there. You've taken it, but the effect is not there. So in this, in this occasion, I, I wanted to narrate a interesting story. This happened in 90s to one of the boys. Uh, one of the students. As you know, November 22nd is the day when all the convocation dramas happen. Uh, and students put up a, after the convocation is over, students put up a drama, which is very famously known as convocation drama. Uh, and then it happens uh, every year, even this year it happened. So boys were practicing for the drama and this particular boy um, was actually in his jatakam, like you know, like uh, like he Kundli, that's what they say in Hindi as well. So the essentially it was written that when he's at a certain age, he will have a fatal accident and he'll, his entire hand will be broken. This boy did not know it. His parents know it. So interestingly enough, this boy got a small character because he's a very good boy. He wakes up every morning. He's the perfect disciplinarian. He goes to Suprabhatam, you know, bhajans and everything. He gets very good marks, very disciplined, always comes to Swami's Darshan, etc. So he was given a role in convocation. And his role was part of a side read role or something where he has an accident in the drama. And as a part of the accident, his hand breaks. Interesting story. So his parents are watching this uh, drama happen. This drama happens and they are crying. Uh, and then Swami doesn't talk to this boy and he walks away and he feels very bad. Swami, I've been doing so everything disciplinedly for the last 10 years. You've never spoken to me. I thought this is my chance because convocation drama is the maximum 15 to 20 boys, not more than that those days. So he thought definitely Swami will talk to each of them after the drama when he comes out of the stage. But Swami doesn't talk to ex except him. He talks to everybody, give, gives Vidhi uh, some ring or chain and walks away. But this boy doesn't get it. He feels very bad. He comes down. He speaks to, he sees his mother and father crying and they're, they're, they're not un, he's not understanding. He's crying for different reason. And they, so they don't say, why are you crying? And say, no, we are very, very happy today. You don't know, but this year was the most dangerous year for you. So what do you mean? It's written in your uh, jatakam that this year you will have a fatal accident and do in a construction site and then you'll lose your hand. And that's exactly the scene you have played in the drama. And we feel that this is not going to happen anymore for you. <laughs> Because there is no, con no no other construction happening in Buddha, then that's what you're saying. And that's when he feels. Uh, and then he thinks on the stage that Swami is merciless. And then he thinks, Swami, you're merciless. Uh, so you're so merciful. So next day he's sitting in the darshan, Swami is walking by. If Swami is walking by and he looks at, finally looks at this boy. Am I merciful or merciless? And then he, he takes path and says, Swami, Swami, you are very, very mer merciful. So navigating karma with Sai. So when we dedicate all of this uh, uh, completely to Swami, when you have that surrender, Swami will, Swami's grace will always be there with you. So this fourth point, so while we navigate karma with Sai, how do we get this gra grace of love? Here, here also Swami explains there are four or, dif four or five different ways to b get that grace of God. How do we get that? Swami says selfless seva pure love or intense spiritual sadhana and namaspara. So Swami says these four are the four of four of the ways where you can get the grace of Lord, which entail which in turn actually stops the effect of karma. The karma effects are reduced, right? Selfless seva. Selfless seva, pure love, intense spiritual sadhana and namaspara. Right, so these four are the things. So um, now I'll narrate, perhaps, fantastic some of the fantastic experiences that I've had in all this. Is selfless seva, selfless seva. So Swami al always talks about this uh, incidents from uh, Mahabharata where Draupadi uh, uh, is with Krishna. They're all celebrating uh, a particular event, and Krishna, as a part of the celebrations and dances, so suddenly Krishna's hand finger is cut off, and the Krishna is bleeding. 
and everybody is running out looking for a first aid kit what to do oh bring this physician bring this protect krishna protect krishna everybody loves krishna right but draupadi in this festival it was wearing the most expensive sari she doesn't even care for anything she tears her sari fresh new most expensive sari whatever she tears it ties it er, and uh, puts it and stops krishna's blood for that you can see that because of that selfless seva to lord krishna krishna later on during the days of mahabharata when she is actually humiliated in the so when her sari is taken off krishna gives tons and tons and tons of sari for this one piece of sari so swami says that when when you have when you do selfless seva then you do not even think like uh, you don't have any expectation of the outcome any expectation of uh, what the what the what your action is god becomes very very happy right so i think that is something very very powerful so in the in the same place i'm very tempted to narrate one of the stories that happened personally to me so as cyberde brother was telling you uh, i used to be the service coordinator uh, in uh, in slaus eye center in west london for some time and recently obviously we know it's still going on uh, so in very initial year in months of february when the war broke out in ukraine uh slavs high center uh, and region 2 uh, they do a lot of very good service for eastern european countries like moldova romania there are small countries there bolivia there are uh, very very small small countries there which are very poor actually they are uh, much poorer than some of indian states also like moldova is very poor so so slavs high center has been sending a lot of uh you know uh, food and as food essentials clothes and everything for years together they've been doing this interestingly enough uh, the war happened just on the border of moldova moldova has a border with ukraine so so slavs eye center sai center and region 2 became the hub for all the activity even from even from prashanti trust here uh, they were actually working with me at that time to actually help uh, coordinate with our group because we were the only group addressing the needs of that region because we had access we we had a organization called teach which actually partners with us and does it there they don't actually they don't take money they just take goods so if you actually typically contribute to red cross or anybody the 30 or 40 percent goes for administrative charges so it actually actually the entire money that you give doesn't go for seva it goes for administrative charges and almost 50 percent is gone so this organization called teach is a is very fantastic because they don't take money at all they said just give us food we'll go and take and distribute simple so sa sa organizations region 2 actually partnered with them so for a, for quite a few years before also we were doing that anyway but this fell into the lap so i was very very busy and actually my home home became kind of a go down my itself because i was uh, putting that everywhere uh, so and we had a very novel format where uh, we would con- collect about 20 pounds uh, per person but that 20 pounds would become two months of perishable non perishable goods so you will have you know pasta cans bread bean cans rice packets oil anything that a person who is on the run can carry in their bags right so tissue papers tampons as well sometimes for ladies sleeping bags anything that could suggest where they could actually wherever they can stop they can microwave it eat it pack it again so that kind of a non perishable goods so i was very very busy with that and uh, um coordinating everything and then uh, even uh, from a center point of view collecting everything and th- and then we had a very good brother who owned a go down and warehouse and truck who could use his trucks and send it to europe and so on and so forth so we were very very busy so we already had sent some two trucks and a lot of my office colleagues were also contributing to the money actually in fact all um, many of my classmates with whom i was mentioning to you about they also contributed a lot so i was collecting and doing everything this is what i'm used to also doing this is a form of seva used to be very used to prashant madam as well very very busy in shivam as well so i'm very used to that so i was doing that one of my another colleague uh, her name was irina she is ukrainian but uh, lives in uh, germany so she was doing in germany office for within our own office she was doing some activity and her cousin used to, he lives in dnipro U- ukraine so you dnipro is uh, slightly far away from kiev uh, and uh, th- this cousin used to be an advocate obviously there is no other job after war has broken out that so everybody has become either a army person or a volunteer so this person became this lady sonia her name is sonia so she became a volunteer 
So she started actually rescuing people from the roads, injured, get them to hospitals, get them back to home, serve them food and so on and so forth. They used to uh, order some for uh, so on and so forth. That's what she used to do. I don't know, I didn't know this person. So Irina, my colleague said, um, Sai, I see that you are doing already a lot of uh, service for Ukraine people. Can you also help my cousin? So at that time, Russians had actually bombed a children's hospital in Dnipro. So the children's hospital completely got uh, smashed and the generators also broke. So there was some beds and operation theater still intact. So they were still fine. So they were trying to, so this, this girl, Sonia, was, to, was trying to raise some money to at least to buy generators so that the hospital can be back up, back up and running, right? So she was, so she started a GoFund page on, on online and she was trying to raise 10,000 pounds because that's what uh, two generators cost, 10,000 pounds. So she was doing her. So this link was sent to me by Irina saying, Sai, you're doing a lot of the Ukraine activity. So can you do this? And I said, Irina, I'm very busy because I didn't even look at that link. I said, um, I'm very busy because my house is like a good on how to first, you know, vacate my house. Uh, there's a lot of food. Uh, so in some form I'm doing service, so uh, let it go. Uh, I'll see if I can do something, but as of now, I'm just busy here. We are all busy. We are, we are limited. That's why Swami is unlimited. But uh, so one day, so the, that day, the, that particular day, actually, the final truck was going to Ukraine. Uh, and then two of my colleagues did a late donation. They put 200 pounds into my account and then say, hey, Sai, we just saw your email. We, we didn't see you see this for a long time. Sorry. Uh, we just put 200 pounds into your account. Uh, please use it as you as you wish for the activities that you're doing. But the truck was already going. I said, guys, I just finished the truck. Uh, the truck is just left, but I'm pretty sure there'll be future opportunities. In a couple of months time, we are still planning for two or three times to be sent to Ukraine borders. So I'll use it that time. And then I forgot for two days. And then after two days, Irina sent the link again to me. Sai, do you remember my request? And then I suddenly remember, oh, the, uh, this girl, I mean, my colleague of mine, she's asking, I forgot. So <laughs> I opened that link. And then I said, so let's do something. We ha I have the 200 pounds, so let's do something for this. And uh, this girl, Sony, has been trying to raise this money for 10,000 pounds for two and a half months. So everybody sees, everybody who wants to do five euros to 10 euros, 15 euros, 20 dollars. It's been building up, building up for two and a half months. And it's been inactive for almost two, three weeks. Almost two, three weeks, there was no activity. So the Sonia was becoming desperate because the hospital was not running, more people were dying and et cetera. And I opened it uh, uh, after this truck left very next day. And then I uh, saw the target as 10,000 pounds. And the uh, amount that they reached was exactly 9,800 pounds. Exactly 9,800 pounds. And I had that exact 200 pounds. <laughs> right. And so I said, oh my God, it's Jay Sagram. And then I <laughs> clicked on the button and I, 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 I gave those 200 pounds and I, I messaged Irina, I'm, I'm seeing there is a lingering 200 pounds that you require, I paid it. Uh, you, should, you should have the money with you now. And then um, Sonia called Irina and she was crying and she was, she was desperately feeling very, very bad uh, um, uh, that uh, why are you crying? What is happening? Why are you crying? And then uh, Sonia says, for two and a half months I've been crying and I've been, I've been sorry. Uh, and I've been sitting near God and I've been sorry. And then she tells this story to Irina saying, when she, she's an advocate, as I told you. So every, pay, every case she took up, for two months before the war, she was becoming desperate for money or more greedy. She was charging all the cases 200 euros extra. <laughs> she was charging 200 unnecessarily. She was just, wherever there was a final bill, she was just adding up $200, 200 euros, 200 euros, 200 euros. She just had a target in mind. She wanted to buy a car or something. For two months, she was just adding up $200, unnecessary dollars, corruptively, and she was adding that. And then uh, she was feeling guilty for last two and a half weeks where the, you know, it stopped near 9,800 9, pounds and she didn't have any money left. And everybody's at war, bombs are falling everywhere, so on and so forth. And she was feeling bad that, oh, I shouldn't have been greedy, oh, shouldn't, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry, God, that I'm, I shouldn't have done this, I shouldn't have done this. And two and a half, and I, am, I actually knew even one week before, but, you know, Swami has his own ways. But exactly when she said, uh, apparently that day she said, I'm giving up. 
I, I cannot do this anymore. I, I need this. I want to serve. I will never do this again. And that is when some thousand miles away where I was sitting, I have no clue about this, who this woman is, what she has done, what, what, what has happened behind uh, her, all of this country. I press this 200 pounds and it becomes 10,000 pounds and she buys the generators and then and then she gets it installed in the hospital. The hospital is back up and running. Uh, and that is where Swami helped her as well. So it's, it's very, very, uh, so it's very, very interesting how Swami narrates this selfless seva. Seva has to be completely selfless, right? And Swami used to always tell us uh, uh, this as well. Swami says, Swami used to tell us very, very clearly, solve the problem, either solve the problem, leave the problem, don't live the problem. So when you don't live the problem, that's the moment where you surrender completely to Swami and say, Swami, I give up. <laughs> you take over. Probably that is it. So this story I cannot forget. It's a very, very powerful story as to how karma has uh, implications, but you can ask for the grace of Lord uh, through selfless uh, seva and you can attain that. So the second thing that Swami says is pure love. right? So pure love can also earn you grace of God. So I'm, remind, uh, I'm reminded of a, um, my own story uh, where this has happened to me. Of, uh, as Sai Bada brother was telling you, I used to be called as Prasadam boy. Uh, Prasadam boy in Prashantrinian. Uh, how did I get into Prasadam? So I never was interested. So when I joined 11th class, uh, and Swami used to give a lot of different, so every alternate day some prasadam used to be there and uh, those were the days Swami would walk in and so Swami used to throw chocolates as well. So we used to be very competent in catching those chocolates. And every alternate day some activity used to go on, somebody used to come, Swami used to give prasadam all the time. Uh, so I used to actually take excessive prasadam. So everybody gets only one, but I used to be very greedy in taking two or three, four or five, just shove every pocket that I've got, put it everywhere possible. So this went on for entire 11th class. But I had a very interesting intent behind it. Uh, very 14 years old. Um, so I just came from Shivam, Hyderabad in that time. So I had a lot of friends back in, um, friends and brothers back in Shivam, Shivam temple. And they used to, and a very revered sir uh, called as Patabi sir, who actually used to take care of Shivam for a long, long time, for 30, 35 years. So they used to visit more often because Swami was very active during the day, every week. So I used to take this excessive pradhavam and say, this is for Vattabhi sir, this is for Murli Hanna, this is for some Sunil Hanna, this is for some Raghar Hanna. So I used to pile up all the sweets and if my parents come, this is more, two more sweets for them, so on and so forth. So I used to reserve those sweets. So I had in no other intention behind this pure love, right? So just reserving that. So one fine day in 12th class, I was made the li line leader. We have a concept called line leader where we come much bef before anybody else comes and organize the lines, make sure boys are in discipline, they sit and so on and so forth. So one of these days I said, Prasadam distribution started, I said, why not, um, I'll also try Prasadam distribution. I've not been doing this, I've not never done it. So first time I picked up the basin, I distributed, uh, I did and I came back and I sat. I was in the first line because I'm the line leader, right? So I. I I occupied first line, selfishly. Uh, and then Swami came and Swami said, Prasadam distribution, I find it, done. I said, Swami, yes, Swami, done. And I said, you took? I said, Swami, I took. Swami, any uh, kunaura, how many did you take? Okay, why did you ask me this? And I said, Swami, and then I said, Swami, uh, I forgot about all my actions, right? Swami said, Swami, only one I took. I said, oh, okay. Normally you take two or three, no? You put this side and this side. <laughs> <laughs> and then everybody started laughing. <laughs> so there were a lot of revered elders, they started laughing and some of my classmates were also there, they were also laughing and then I said, I'm caught. <laughs> I'm caught red-handed and then Swami is looking at me and then I said, Swami, sorry Swami. And then Swami hit my head and Swami said, no problem. And then Swami said, you can take three. One for your heart, one for your mind, one for your soul. But also do seva, distribute it to others. Then Swami will be very happy. From that day till the last day, uh, that was in my length class, but uh, I went on to study for next nine years, but that day till last day, I never left Prasadam Basin, so I was obsessed with it. So much so, so much so that the Prasadam boys always sit behind Swami. So Swami sits in, uh, you know, when the way Swami sits in Kulant Hall, boys sit behind Swami because they're ready 
will, you know, one of the helpers around Swami will come and tell his prasadam and then, then get up from there and go and start and there's a lot of chaos around it. So a lot of my devo- my mother, my parents, my relatives, why, why are you not sitting in the first line before Swami? No, no, I've got an activity. So I was very, very seriously committed to that. So, so Swami comes next first prasadam distribution. So it was, <laughs> it, was, it was going to the other extreme. But Swami had, and all those years I had only one desire. Swami, don't ask my name. <laughs> I've been long enough now. <laughs> Never ask my name. And, uh, uh, and I used to be very scared. I was not, I mean, uh, there, are, there, is a, there is a concept of form boys. It's not that close, but always in and around Swami in all those nine years. All those nine years, Swami used to say, hey, 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 hey. Then I, feel, I used to feel supremely blissful. This A is amazing. <laughs> you don't need to know me. You don't need to ask me. You don't need to act new with me. This, that's all I need. So I used to enjoy that small little A, itra. That's enough. It's, it used to be very beautiful. So uh, pure love, right? So, so although for one whole year I was hogging up a lot of prasadam and taking it all, so I was you know, forg- forgiven all that, put me into the right path. For next nine years, I was actually doing fantastic and uh, even now whenever I've, I have that attitude towards service it was all started that day when Swami said you know take whatever you want but serve others right so navigating karma with Sai right so through selfless seva through pure love you can actually go into you can earn the grace of Lord so I'm also reminded of another few stories but I'm looking at the time so I'll, I'll be watchful uh, so there's another beautiful story which one of one of the brothers whom I was discussing the speech about he was telling me is that in 90s early 90s when Swami got his first Benz car uh, there is there were a lot of boys who were always close to Swami they used to be called as form boys so one of these boys was very very close to Swami and he was very fond of cars so when this new car came he was one of the person privy to watch this new Benz car probably the first one in South India or something like that in early late 80s or something like that. So Swami, he was watching it and he was mesmerized by that car. Swami is in Darshan, but he was touching the car like that. Oh, beautiful car. <laughs> you are so fantastic. Mer- Mercedes Benz, right? So, uh, and he was saying, you, but he was going into that phase of where, oh, you have such good opportunity to serve Swami. You, Swami will sit right here in you, in your seat. I wish I could be you. <laughs> so he was interacting with himself so much. He was going into that blissful zone, he sits into the driver's seat and he looks at the steering, he's completely lost himself. And he starts the car, he doesn't see that the car is in the gear, he's in the first gear. And he starts the car and the car goes and smashes the, <laughs> smashes the wall. And everybody watches this, some of the boys behind who have watched this and he comes out, he's panicking, he's sweating, he's crying. And they said, oh my God, Swami is going to kill me <laughs> if he sees that. So everybody was saying, ah, you are finished now. <laughs> Right, uh, and then Swami. Uh, so everybody is expecting this one is over. He is never going to be again, even somewhere near Swami or anything. So, and then uh, Swami comes out, and then Swami says, uh, and he's sweating and everything. Why, Indukra? Why are you? Why are you so much sweating so much? And Swami say, uh, and there is a Swami. So, and somebody has come to Swami. He just drove your car into the wall. <laughs> and then Swami is like, oh, it's just a car. We'll get another one. It's okay. And then Swami walks away. Normally, Swami, if you do some mischievous stuff, Swami is very angry normally. So he, he, he was completely pardoned. And, uh, and they, they asked Swami, are you not angry? And then Swami is like, no, no, he has a pure love for a Benz. That's why it happened. It's okay. <laughs> You'll have Benz in your car, in your life. Don't worry. And Swami walks away. So Swami just diffused the whole situation. The karma has happened. He's struggled. He's gone through all of that. Uh, but it's interesting. So that's why our Swami is always used to tell us that if you express, you express what's in your heart, what's in your mind, what's what's going on with you, you express it out, you live. If you don't, you merely exist. So our Swami always used to say that if you want to live, share. If you want to do, serve. If that's the way of living, right? So I think to all this, ca- so to again to reiterate, it's about to earn the grace of God. Let's have that uh, pure love, selfless love, uh, selfless seva. And in selfless seva, it actually I'm reminded of another incident as well. So I, I told you I'm, I, I used to be the personal distribution in charge. And just like our uh, dear brothers are sitting there taking care of the EV, they struggled all to, I actually remembered when they were going through this, Sai Barade brother and the brothers in the back, they were, 
they were uh, struggling to start the zoom running and the camera running and so on and so forth i remembered this incident i wanted to tell this this is again act of self love huh? selfless uh, seva so we have a very revered uh, professor professor venkatramana garu so is uh, is a physics professor in uh, uh, in prashant nilayam and uh, he used to he used to be very very to himself nothing he's a very angry man as well if you go near him he'll just shout at you so but he is very he comes to the university goes to mandir and he had one job to do he he used to take care of exactly what they're doing so he used to take care of the avs mics bhajans and especially swami's mic and swami's discourse table and so on and so forth so he used to only do that no don't talk to anybody else he'll just go and sit in literally he used to sit like this with his legs so very in bhajan all which is this is one of the greatest thing i feel very privileged to stand here it just replicates the bhajan all that we have in prashant nilayam it also remembers if you've been to london actually wimbledon sai center also has a very similar uh, bhajan all wi- which replicates exactly like uh, prashant I'm, i'm feeling very privileged to stand here i've never st- stood like this in bhajan all so i'm feeling the goosebumps of it so essentially uh, this is the format and he used to sit on this side there is a small little box with uh, all these audio instruments and he re- literally crunches himself sits in that small box and does it duty i've seen him doing that for years and years together probably much before even i joined but all those years he will just humbly go and sit there do and everything so one of these days uh, there was a big uh, uh, festival and swami gave uh, prasadam distribution w- the discourse was done swami gave one and a half hour discourse after that by the bhajans were done drama there was all of things and swami left everybody was left and the, as we are the prasadam boys some of the some of us actually go very late we come very early and we go very late because we have to collect all the basins you know when the ta- almost nearly 15 to 20000 people come so there's a lot of basins to collect uh, make sure everything is clean are in one place and with the people who are coordinating we put back all the basins inside and so on and so forth. we always used to be late so me and another brother of mine we were actually collecting all the basins putting inside and etc and suddenly we saw the discourse table is there when venkatamana garu is standing there and looking he's standing he is holding the mic and he's l- sh- laughing loudly like there is a resound in high gulanda nobody is there is just a few of us so what happened to this guy so we ran and said so is you sir are you okay share the joke with us also we'll also laugh what happened sir and then he, and then he's crying also there is tears coming out of his uh, eyes and he's crying and laughing crying and laughing and he's looking at the mic uh and he's looking at the mic i said why is he looking at the mic and crying and laughing i said sir what happened why are you laughing why are you smiling what's happening with you and then i said mic mic chudandra and he's very revered and so he used to always call us ra mic chudandra ante em chudal sir ante nen wire betledu ra i did not put wire and then oh, what happened sir and it's not a wireless mic so i'm talking about 2004 or 5 we still didn't get the wireless mics at that time so we still had the manual wires and then i said nen wire betledu ra iwala so i have not put the wire today and then they said it was still not clicking to our brains and then some said what do you mean sir and then he hit me on my head and i saw me did whole discourse without the wire <laughs> where did the sound come from <laughs> right so the entire discourse happened and the wire was not even plugged in <laughs> and it's not a wireless mic i tell you that <laughs> and we all heard through these fantastic ahuja bose mics and bose speaker systems which are all there <laughs> sophisticated the sound has come out normally so it's amazing so selfless seva so when you are completely uh, absorbed uh, into swami seva uh, the karmic effects the actions will not have the same impact right so the swami will ta- swami will grace of lord will come and everything will be fine so we'll move to the third section i'm 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 conscious probably brother five more minutes um i just wanted to cover this off so the the last thing is basically the intense uh, so swami says the last part is intense s- spiritual sadhana and namaskarana uh, so if you if you have intense uh, spiritual if you go through this spin you're in this path of intense spiritual sadhana also you will learn grace of swami and uh, uh, this reminds me of one of the uh, um very beautiful incidents which happened with kasturi garu which this brother of mine was narrating when i was preparing for the speech event so uh, so you you all have must have seen swami's badrinath trip videos where swami went with a lot of devotees at that time and kasturi garu b- on one of the days when he was coming back outside of the room he was walking beside the ganges and suddenly he sees a sage suddenly he sees a sage floating in ganges and just passing by uh he is just sitting is falling off like this and the sa- sage is sage's body is going off and he 
sends a chill into his spine and saying, why did this happen to this Mahatma? Because in that area of Badrinath, Kedar and everything, there's a lot of Agoras, a lot of sages who are very self-realized and so on and so forth. That body is going and then, and then he's very struggling to digest that vision that he has just had. He comes back to the group and Swami looks at him. Kasturi, I mind you. And Swami, nothing. Chepu, chepu, chepu. Vilandar ki chepu. Tell all of these people what has happened. And then he narrates this incident of uh, Swami, this is Vempa. I saw the body of this person. I don't know if he is living or anything. And then Swami suddenly says, Spi um, spiritual, whoever is on the path of spiritual sadhana and he's intensely searching for self-realization, I will always protect my devotees. Nothing has happened to that uh, sage. He is normal, he is fine. And then Swami walks away. And then Kasturi Garu is not sure and the rest of them also are even scared right now. And they're not sure. This is Himalayas here talking about in Ganja, Ganges and the, this guy has seen already the body floating. The body is floating, he's finished already, right? So there's no chance. There's lingering uh, fear in it. And then they walk back inside the town. Kasturi Garu sees the same sage walking by and he's saying Om Namah Shiva, Om Namah Shiva and he's walking away. And Kasturi Garu is completely shocked that, you know, Swami, is, so, Swami says, but who has whoever is goes through this intense path of spiritual uh, sadhana and is, has this ultimate goal of self-realization, self Swami is always going to protect. Right? So I think that's an amazing story that, that comes to my mind. And uh, one of the sweet stories that we remember is that in this, in the intense, uh, you know, intense spiritual sadhana is also following Swami blindly. Swami's command uh, blindly. And if you follow the command uh, blindly also so you will earn grace of Lord which is which doesn't uh, impact the karmic effects of what you have done so this is uh, from a Kodai Canal story uh, where Swami used to always go to Kodai Canal take some boys and so on and so forth there were some boys always taking care of cleaning the door and they were always waiting outside uh, whenever Swami came and then they th their uh, uh, duty was to clean that porch and so on and so forth these are two boys standing there and then Swami comes out one day, the final day, they were going off, the buses were ready and so on and so forth. Uh, and there is a, and you all know those pink uh, uh, creeper plants. I forgot the name of it. There are creep, there are cre the pink creeper plants which have pink flowers. Bougainvillea plants, exactly, that's right, Bougainvillea plant. Sorry, thank you. Uh, so th these are, they are very thorny, creepy plants. If you go near them, you'll get itchy and so on and so forth. They never have fruits. Swami puts his hands into that bougainvillea plant and takes two plums out. Two plums out and gives these to two boys. And everybody is clapping and everything. And Swami says, eat. And these fellows are uh, doing a lot of seva since morning. They're hungry. They just blindly eat that plum. Uh, they eat that plum and Swami gets into the car. They get into the bus. And one of the sirs, one of our school uh, sirs who were also on that trip, he observes this. He says, they're lucky boys and they go and sit. Uh, it's about ha about 20 minutes. He turns back. He turns back and see these boys are still chewing that plum. They're saying by this time the plum should have finished. <laughs> what is happening? And then the boys are actually smiling, crying. What is that? What's happening with you? Spit it out. What is that? Sir, this plum is not finishing. It's turned now into chocolate. <laughs> They're chewing and chewing. It's, it's turned into a chocolate, <laughs> right? So. So what Swami says and what, what we have to understand here from is that the most bitter form of karma or most bitter form of fruit, whatever it is, with grace of Lord, even the seeds will not exist of karma and the karmic effects will not have it. It will in fact turn very sweet. So uh, by just following uh, command of Lord strongly, it can happen. The you can earn grace of Lord. And that's the reason why Swami... Uh, uh, so when you think about all of the things that we have talked today and think about the basic things were that Swami always says in every discourse, love all, serve all, help our hurt never. That's what Swami says, which which we all are, it's probably a cliche in our community that everybody talks about it, but when you tie it with all of it, love all, serve all, help our hurt never, it's all action oriented. It's all action. Action, action. Love all, serve all, help ever, hurt never. It's an intentional action which Swami has defined us and kept on brainwashing us so that if we do that, the karmic effects can be easily navigated because you are if you do continuously do that, you know, through selfless sevas, pure love, intense sadhana and namasmarana, 
if you commit and take the command of lord then the karmic effects can be navigated with that i will stop thank you so much jai sai ram so i think we had a very long session today um, thanks a lot first our technology right somehow you know everything came through but the bhajan was really good you know thank you and then uh, the last is that we like uh, uh, you know what we call as the today is a very interesting thing you spoke about bhishma pitama right and you said about kasturi garu and we have our kasturi garu whom we call as bhishma pitama here yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yes and he is kasturi chris chris whom is kasturi so we like you to come kasturi garu and please uh, felicitate our brother to come on here sir that's our tradition so who by the way was up in the roof when you saw in the bhajan time you know he was up in the roof with the contractor so so with this we do the maharti and then we'll conclude the program so let's do the aarti जगदीश हरे स्वामी सत्य साई हरे भक्त जनासंरक्षक जनासंरक्षक भक्ति महेश्वर ओम जय जगदीश हरे शिवदना शीतरा सर्व प्राणपति स्वामी सर्व